Hi, my name is Jeff Farrell, and uh, this is my partner, Sebastian Vessels, and we're here to give you an overview of the shop usage and safety. Okay, let's start with safety. Um, at all times in the shop, we want to make sure that you're wearing eye protection. If you're going to wear your own prescription eye protection, please use side shields on them. If you don't have your own eye protection, we do have some here in the corner that you can use. Um, there are no long sleeves allowed in the shop. If you do have long sleeves, please roll them up. We don't want any loose clothing, necklaces, neckties, scarves, anything like that. Uh, always make sure you're wearing closed-toed shoes in the shop. If you're gonna wear gloves in the shop, we require that you use these five mil nitrile gloves, nothing thicker than that. Um, if you do need hearing protection, um, and there are a few tools that we would recommend hearing protection for. We've got on the wall over there some earmuffs that you can use. If you have someone with long hair or you have long hair, we do have tie backs that you can use. And of course, no alcohol or drug use while in the shop. We do have a first aid kit here on the wall, an eye wash station, and a fire extinguisher. And in addition to that, we do have an emergency stop button here on the wall that'll shut down the power to everything in the shop. We have areas in the shop that has to be kept clear. One of the examples of that is in front of the big breaker box, uh, there's de a space demarked in front of the box, so that has to be kept clear for code compliance purposes and safety. The same thing applies for areas in front of the fire extinguisher and so forth. Uh, the shop is for 18 plus use only. If, if you br bring an underage observer into the shop, uh, he or she must comply with all the safety rules and must be under your control at all time. And if I say you, I mean the legal guardian. If something happens and we have an injury, you have to be able to sign uh, for this person at the emergency room. If a machine makes unusual noises, stop it right away and red tag it. Here's an example of the red tag, but there's a lot of red tags available in the stationary closet. Uh, Slack is the best way to, and the easiest way to get all of us. Uh, we are both fairly responsive on Slack. So the channel is Machine Shop. The shop captains are myself, Sebastian Wessels, and Jeff Farrell. The shop is a sta shared space. Please be courteous. Clean up after yourself. Always strive to leave the shop cleaner than you found it. Walking around drags chips uh, in all kinds of places. So if you just were working on one machine, that, those chips doesn't necessarily stay there. You drag them around. So clean more than, you, more than your immediate area and try and make the shop cleaner than you found it. That way it will always be great. No wood cutting is allowed, but plastic is okay. Wood cutting creates this dust that becomes mixes with the oil and it becomes the sticky goo. If you damage or break anything, it's your responsibility to, to rep repair or replace it. Please share any incidents on Slack. We need to know what happened. Please be honest and help us manage the shop in the most efficient way. Sometimes we have to go back and inspect the equipment on where the incident happened to make sure that everything underlying didn't get damaged. Please comply with our usage fees. Uh, we got the box r r right here next to me. Uh, use this donation back box or PayPal at the front. Uh, we have some suggested donations, uh, which is $2 an hour, $5 a day, and $20 a month, as listed on the box itself. The MyTech and Sile usage fees are $10 an hour. Those two are very expensive machines. The golden rule of the machine shop, if something is hard to do, you're not doing it correctly. So uh, be, always be aware of that. If you want to change gears on the lathe, it shouldn't be hard, it should be easy. And uh, just be aware of the fact that we are staying on top of what happens in the shop with video surveillance. Okay, Tinker Access is what controls all the three phase power in the shop. We got the unit over here, and the way you log in is you just use your fob, you hit it over there, and it will say attempting login. It should, if you've got access granted, it will come right back. It will show your name, and it comes up with an initial 100 minutes. Uh, that's where you get the one hour 39 minutes from. Uh, you've got a, a green light on the three phase uh, con contact that will come on that will show you uh, that the power is actually turned on. So, this is a uh, you can also, if you want it, if you need more than an hour and 40 minutes or 100 minutes, you could just hit it again and you'll get, say session extended, you'll get another 100 minutes. So if you know you're gonna be in the shop for a long time, you can uh, easily do that. 
to log out of Tinker Access, there's a re red button on the bottom. You just hit the red button and that will log you, log you out. Please remember to log out when you're done because we just wanted to make sure that whoever you're using the shop at that time is the person that's actually using the shop. So if the next guy comes in, just hand the session over to him. And by the way, that you can do that as well. If you are in the shop and somebody else walks in and they want to take over the shop, they can just batch in over you without any disruption of the power. And then finally, I want to log back in to show you the e-stop. You've got the e-stop over there. Uh, and, also, and the e-stop, if you hit it, it will cut the power and the power will be off and the red light on top there will, will be flashing. That red light also flashes when there's only five minutes left, uh, five minutes of time left in your session. So just kind of on the out of the corner of your eye, you know, keep an eye on that if you're working and you don't have a very long uh, amount of time in there. So, but if you, if you then see the red light come on, you could just come and hit it again and extend your session. So back here in the grinding area, we've got climate control and fire alarm. First of all, the fire alarm is right here on the back wall and the thermostat for the heater is right over here behind the grinder. The thermostat controls the temperature and the switch for the heater is actually on the opposite wall underneath the heater. So you have to turn the heat on there and then adjust the thermostat here. In addition, we have the swamp cooler for the area. The controller for the swamp cooler is actually across the hallway in pottery and it's labeled as a switch there. So again, back here in the corner, we have our two grinding setups. The first setup here is the surface grinder. This machine does require a specific certification, so you can go online and, and sign up for certification on that. Uh, we also have a bench grinder here in the corner. Uh, the bench grinder is only for grinding tools and materials here in the machine shop. If you have something that's heavy grinding, if you're going to do your lawnmower blade or something like that, please take it back out in the welding bay. They have rougher grinders out there that'll be uh, better suited for that purpose. Okay. Um, since, the gr since both of these uh, produce a grinding dust and we want to keep that away from the equipment, we've got a shower curtain set up here. So if you're gonna be grinding back here, please pull that curtain closed and separate it from the rest of the shop. So here on this wall, we have our general tools as well as the bandsaw. Our general tool wall has a good selection of hand tools. Things are relatively organized in, in, in broad areas. So if you do take something down, please put it back in the same area that you got it from. We do have a selection of drill bits up here but these drill bits are all, are all very well used. Like most of the cutting tools here in the shop, we do have a fairly good selection of them, but we really recommend that you purchase your own cutting tools. You're gonna to be a lot happier with them. As far as the drill bits go though, we do have a drill doctor here as well. Um, that drill doctor can sharpen any of the bits that, you, that we have here um, and feel free to use that as you need to. Uh, we do have a selection of larger drill bits and some reamers. Um, those are in the cabinet and are available at request. Just reach out to any of the shop captains and we can give you access to any of those tools as well. The bandsaw is a, a tool that requires a separate certification. Um, keep in mind though that it is a fairly low capacity machine. Um, it's for cutting only soft metals and plastics only. So you can't cut any steel. You can't cut anything that's very thick um, and you can only cut straight lines. But it does have its uses here in the shop. We also have a chop saw here in the, in, in the shop, and this is a useful sh uh, saw for thick pieces of aluminum. If you want to cut stock, uh, aluminum, brass, aluminum, brass only. We don't uh, do steel on this. The blade simply doesn't last. People abuse it, so we limit it to uh, aluminum and brass, but it works well for, for thick stock. It is extremely noisy, so you, know, you definitely want to uh, use hearing protection. And as for all saws, uh, make sure that the saw does the work. So don't force the blade, you know, gi give it just gentle pressure and the saw will do its work and you'll have a good cut. So along this wall, we have our stock shelves. Uh, we've got both stock and tooling stored on these, on these shelves. So all of the stock is marked. So anything on here on the shelf that is marked as stock uh, is available for member use. 
uh, we do suggest a donation for them. Uh, some of the stock, some of the larger pieces, we've actually labeled a suggested price on them. Uh, the smaller stuff that's not labeled, just let your conscience be your guide. You know, somewhere between the cost of scrap and the cost of new, and you can put the cost of your, your donation for the material in the blue box or pay for it up at the kiosk up front. In the hallway across from the machine shop, we have our large brake shear. This particular tool does require a separate certification, uh, but it, it is a very, very well qualified tool. Uh, it's good for shearing uh, and bending material up through 16 gauge. Uh, in addition, underneath on the shelves down below, we have a, a good selection of punches and shears and hand brakes as well for doing sheet metal work. Let's talk about some of the big machines that we have here in the shop. The first one that you see when you come in is this MyTex CNC. It's a very large three axis CNC machine. It does have a very extensive certification process for it, uh, but it's a very useful machine. Immediately down to its, uh, to its left over here, we've got two vertical mills. Uh, these are both Bridgeport style mills. Uh, they are also three axis, but they're hand controlled, and it's really your best entrance into the machine shop. Real great tool to learn first. Sebastian? And over here we got two lathes. This one is set up for metric threading, very capable lathes with about a 40, 48 inch bed. Um, so like I said, this one is gearing for, for a metric. And then over here we got an inch one uh, that exactly the same thing, except that the gearing is set up for uh, standard SAE threading. And then at the back there, we have a, another CNC machine uh, called a Sile. It is a smaller machine than, than the MyTech, but it's also very capable and stuff like cooling and, and tool changes and all of that works a little bit di different. But once again, as Jeff pointed out with the MyTech, there's an extensive certification class for that as well. Okay, let's talk about cleanup. We got the brooms here on the side of the cabinet. So uh, they, they hang on the nails. And the reason why I point out that they hang on nails is people come in here and they kind of leave them. The nails are there for a purpose. So please just hang them up the way you find them. And uh, if, you, if you vacuum stuff up, I find it works better to actually use the broom, sweep it up into a pile and then uh, you know, vacuum it up after that. If the vacuum canister is becoming full, you need to just have a peek in there from time to time and then please empty it. The dumpster is behind the wood shop and make sure it goes into the trash dumpster and not into this recycling dumpster. Uh, also, remember to reset your tinker axis at the bottom that, you, that the power is off when you leave. Uh, we, at the back, we got the big garage door. Make sure that is latched. And uh, there is actually a reminder sheet here uh, general clean, uh, cleanup checklist next to the cabinet. So if you're not sure that you covered it all, just look at the checklist and that should be it. Thank you.